So Rolling Stone is not welcoming Jon Stewart back to The Daily Show. They published an article this week uh, complaining, is Jon Stewart still the right person to host The Daily Show? The comedy vet has returned, obviously, to the desk that he left in 2015 this evening, but his both sides are equally bad approach may not translate to 2024. Again, that's according to Rolling Stone. One ex-user wrote, Jon Stewart is no longer up to the task. He's incapable of an original idea, relied on lazy tropes that appeal more to the white dude bro demographic, and most importantly, has joined the DC press corps in their inability to see the forest for the trees, a fail at The Daily Show. Journalist Aaron Rupar wrote on X, Jon Stewart still has it in terms of being funny and entertaining, but the political content of this monologue is basically the New York Times op-ed page in TV form. Both sides are not, in fact, equally bad. So, like, it, it, it's going to hurt your mind a little bit to try to understand what Rupar is even trying to say. Rupar is a liberal who thinks that, Dom, that the New York Times, a deeply liberal paper, is too hard right. on Joe Biden. Yes. Okay, and they all are using this refrain. The Rolling Stone uses this refrain. You hear Rupar saying it there. Keith Olbermann, predictably, was big, but oh, mad God. about this. He got, Make it uh, another this. nine years? <laughs> Keith Olbermann has also called on the Hill to fire you and I, yeah, so well, we're in good company. He's, he's consistent, to say the least. Um, but he also The worst <laughs> person in the world! <laughs> but the refrain he keeps echoing, that everybody is echoing, is he calls him a both-siderist fraud. Both sides. Yes. The Rolling Stone um, claims that his both sides are equally bad approach may not translate to 2024. Yeah. I want to be really clear about this. That's a lie. Yeah, that is not, not think, what he said in that no. monologue. He goes out of his way to claim, this, to say that Trump is worse, and flips the whole ageism thing on its head in the monologue by saying, yes, how bad it is to have this old octogenarian who can't remember his words. Let's take a look. And then plays videos of Donald Trump. So he really is making what his position is clear, perhaps to the detriment of the public, but never mind, that Trump is worse than Biden. But he specifically argues that if you agree that Trump is a threat to this democracy, Democrats need to be putting forward their best player. And that person is not Joe Biden. Yeah. He is advocating for an outcome that best enables Democrats to meet Donald Trump. What Democratic, the Democratic establishment can't accept is that that person increasingly is unlikely to be Joe Biden. Yeah. So The View responded to this. Alyssa Farah welcomed him back, but then there was some dissatisfaction about just what you were saying, that there would be any criticism whatsoever of Joe Biden. Or in vote, vote for Biden or your kid's going to be killed by Putin's army is basically where this kind of red scare argument, this Russiagate argument has gotten us to. Look, when you're a daytime TV host, and you say, "I hate to bring up, Poo uh, I hate to bring up Hitler," but and your own audience goes, mm -hmm. "Maybe you have lost touch with public sentiment." Democrats really want this age issues to be a Republican uh, creation that is being embraced by a bored media environment that's struggling for stories, and that it's a big nothing burger. But after treating it that way for years, instead of reckoning with the problem, they're now being confronted with the fact that they're just months out from an election and the polls are what they are. This is an organic feeling that's shared by most Americans and most Democrats that Biden is not the ideal choice in large part because he's too old. And I was listening to Pod Save America last night to see their take on this. They did a new episode about the Biden age issue and they're all, you know, former um, Obama, Biden, White House staffers, they have their own pol uh, political ideology and are very supportive of the president. But even they're like, Democrats have to stop pretending like this is some kind of gotcha that they can yeah. ignore. They're falling into the Hillary 2016 trap, which is to pretend that every criticism is in bad faith and not take the opportunity to address it in ways that could actually be remedial. Talk to someone outside the bubble. Talk to someone outside like a highly partisan liberal media, democratic environment, talk to real people, Democrats. Democrats. Real people who are not, but who are not, you know, at the top of the political elite or are, you know, extremely affluent and extremely plugged in. Talk to normal folks out in the swing states, again, who might have voted for Biden last time. They will tell you they are very concerned about his age. This is not an idea that Fox News tricked people into adopting whatsoever. It is a view that exists in the country because people see him on TV periodically 
and they are worried. They are worried that he increasingly cannot finish his sentences, that he is getting confused more often, yes. that he looks visibly older than he did four years ago. And it is it is a concern. It is at the top of everybody's mind. And he's going to continue. And, and the press, frankly, is now asking him about it a lot, as they should. So it's going to it's going to increase as an issue as p the salience of it will will rise by the media yeah. finally giving it the you know the day in court it deserves. He's not getting younger. Yeah. Polls. So show one thing he can't change. <laughs> he, could, he could change his policies. He could change a lot of things. He cannot stop himself from getting older. Yeah. So to be specific, 86% uh, of voters as of a poll from this week think that Biden is too old to serve. That includes 73% of Democrats who think that Biden is too old to serve. 73% of Democrats. Now, only 35% of Republicans think Trump is too old to serve. Yeah. And you can be mad at that, and you can scream at the heavens and say, oh, but they're the same age as we just right. um, saw AOC do in a, in a different clip in a different yeah. segment. But it doesn't matter. You're, you're just screaming into the fiction. Because it, the age thing is also not really literally about chronological age. It's not literally about old. the number. It's about Noam your Chomsky's perception. old. Right. But other people have their wits about them right. and aren't seen as frail. And this, this is important too old to serve and unable to lead. That's the real critique that's being yeah. uh, levied there. And the, the whole idea that, well, it doesn't really matter because he has advisors, he's just a figurehead. But like, okay, tease that out a little bit. If the job of the president is really to be the front man, the chief communications officer for an agenda that is actually handled by experts and advisors, well, that actually makes it look even worse because he is very, if he is not capable of mm -hmm. doing, if the main part of the role is communicating the the platform and the message and what's going on and, and doing it on TV and in other interviews and other forms and on debate stages, that's the part he's least, he's least, obviously least good at now. You can make the argument that the thinking's still all there, um, but if, if that doesn't matter because his main job is to be an effective communicator, it's, it's, that looks even worse. And also, what does that mean about your Trump threat to democracy argument? If he's just a figurehead, right. if that job really is not so empowered, if it's really about who's around Trump as opposed to Trump himself, then is that an argument that everyone's overblowing the threat that he presents to Great democracy? Point. Fantastic point. Well, that does it for us today on Rising. We will, of course, be back here tomorrow. Enjoy your Valentine's Day, and please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and all that business so you never miss any of our content. We would not want you to go a single day without us if you can avoid it. <laughs> all right, we're available anywhere you listen to podcasts. As you know, take care. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.